everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. This one is on the late actor Heath Ledger and the fact that he was playing the Joker at the time of his death and the fact that we have Joaquin Phoenix playing the Joker now in a new upcoming movie. Probably why it popped into my head this morning but the energy of Heath popped in all around my car when I was on my way home. So I thought I would come home and do his video. I had no intention of doing him. In fact, I have a list of other people, but I didn't feel them. I felt him and he's textured. He's kind of soft and centered and I wanted to look at his chart and he's an Aries. So it didn't make sense to me why this kind of quiet energy was coming into my car and filling up around me, showing me a story of what happened. And it was really, um, it was almost intoxicating, and I'm using that word for a reason, but not the reason you think. Heath is a 12 degrees Aries rising with a 13 degree Aries sun that just popped over into his first house, which means in this lifetime, he was working on expressing his creative nature, which is what he was doing. He was an actor, so he got to express himself through his work as an actor. The other thing with him is he was born on April 4th. That in and of itself shows me, along with his Saturn retrograde in the fifth house, this shows me that there was a disconnect, at least growing up from the father figure in his life. I looked at it very briefly, just before I turned the camera on. What I found really interesting, and I've talked to you guys like a thousand times on this on my astrology videos, was that he had Mars conjunct Mercury. Uh, um, that's pretty fighty fighty. <laughs> that's pretty fighty fighty. But he's an Aries. They're always fighty fighty. Even the low key Aries. He had Mercury in Pisces and he was born with a Mercury retrograde. Now I wanted to talk about that just for a second because we are about to go into a retrograde phrase at the end of October. So I wanted to start talking about that so that you guys understand what Mercury retrograde is. Mercury retrograde and being born with it because obviously it happens three, three and a half times a year where Mercury goes backwards, the appearance, it slows down the motion and it goes backwards from one point in the sky to another from one degree and then backwards to the preceding degrees as far back as it goes and then it moves forward again. And as it moves forward over the degree that it goes retrograde in, that is called station direct or station retrograde, depending on which way it's going. A person born during this time will be born with Mercury retrograde. That is a spiritual aspect. I know everybody freaks out. They're like, oh my God, Mercury retrograde. Oh no, oh this, oh that. It's a spiritual aspect. That's why you're not supposed to focus on contracts and doing things because in electronics and you know, buying a cell phone, buying a car, buying a this or that, a dishwasher, because it is not to focus on the material, it's to focus on the spiritual. So somebody born with this, especially when it elevates into the 12th house and it's conjunct Mars, this tells me a lot about him working from a past life perspective in this life, at least mentally. Now Mercury was in Pisces for him and so was Venus. Venus was in the 11th house and it's more of an Aquarian energy, so it was more open and free. But that Mercury in Pisces is extremely extremely addictive. They have a hard time staying sober in life to begin with, okay? All of them. They're poetic, they're soft-spoken, they're sweet, they're romantic, they're passive-aggressive, they're <laughs> delusional, they're all things Pisces, they're spiritual, they're waiting for things to happen, they're dreamy, they're floaty, they're all of those things. But it's placement and the fact that it's retrograde connected to Mars means that in this lifetime, he came through and was connected to a masculine energy that he was bringing from a past life. It also told me a lot about his communication with people and the fact that at times he was communicating with people that were not in his best interest. He had Saturn retrograde as well. And for all of us with Saturn retrograde, there are issues with the father. So there's always these retrograde planets where we have to work on certain lessons. So you need to look for retrogrades in your chart. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to the channeling part of Heath. That's why I said he came through very sweet, but I haven't finished. Oops, sorry, I digress. He had a Cancer moon placed in its natural position in the fourth house. That's that soft-spoken side that came in the car with me this morning, that very soft, agreeable, and sweet, getting ready to get angry at you with that double Aries there. But he basically approached me in a non-fighty way. I call him fighty 
because they're so argumentative. But he came in with the Cancer Moon. So there was a feeling, and that reflects a lot and has a lot to do with his concern for his daughter at the moment. So there was a lot of focus when I first picked up on his energy on his daughter and family, okay? So he was very, very focused on that. Now, when I asked about the daughter and I asked about the daughter's mother, which would be, I don't know if he was married to her or not, but the actress that he was with at the time, his baby mama, we'll just say his baby mama, um, when I asked about that, I was kind of pushed back from that. I know that she misses him and professes to miss him. However, there was a betrayal that he felt with her at the time of his passing. So I don't believe they were getting along fully at the time that he that they passed. And I do believe that what got him into trouble was his idealization of the lifestyle that he wanted through the addiction, through the drugs, through the way that it made him feel. Now, here's what really threw me off guard. When I was focused on his energy, I began to feel that this young man, because I think he was 27 when he died too. I didn't actually look at that, but I think he was 27. What I started to pick up is this guy was experimenting and that's the Mercury and Mars in the 12th house, just over the 11th house cusp, into the 12th house cusp, pardon me. But he was experimenting with things like um, leaving his body and we'll say time travel and getting out of the physical, which really shocked me. He was doing these things with drugs, okay, or substances or chemicals where he was putting something over his face and inhaling it weirdly through a mask because I know he was playing the Joker, which is a mask, but he was doing this so that he could get into a different state of consciousness. He was playing with fire that way. That's what he showed me. I had no idea. I mean, you know, I wanted to go with the old conspiracy theory thing and I did want to do that and I'm still going to do that, but that's not the beginning of where it started. Something in him was one of these people, and I think it's probably the Mercury in Pisces, could be the Cancer Moon. Um, it was introduced to him as a way of being able to harness energy. So the way that he showed me is when a person on earth is lifting weights and they are doing all kinds of things, they're strengthening their physical body, the physicality of themselves, okay? And they're eating well and they're building their muscle and all of those things. He was talking about building his spiritual muscle and obtaining knowledge in a way that most people wouldn't do. That's what he was talking about. And he was talking about using chemicals and some sort of substance in order to get to that state. So let me give you an example of this because I was trying to find out what he was using. I do know that he used nitrous oxide because he did tell me that, but that's not what I'm talking about. This is something that you inhale off of a mask. And I'm not talking about meth either, like those crazy people that do that and those or sex orgies and stuff. I mean, that's not what this was. Um, I'm not saying he couldn't have done that. I'm saying that's not what he was showing me. So what I was seeing is something that he was inhaling and it was taking his consciousness above and outside of his physical body, which I found just fascinating. Because back in the day with us, we used to do this with LSD and it would take us to a different way of perception, okay? Um, I don't think we thought, oh, we're out of our body, although we would describe it as such. He literally knew what he was doing and putting something that he inhaled that immediately shot the etheric body, the soul body out and into the ethers around him. Ethers is an interesting word too, because you can inhale ether, but that's not what it was either. So he was in groups of people. So he goes to the day that he died. And by the way, there was a producer he was working with because I'm going to the day that he died, but there was a producer that he was working with. He's hyping up my energy right now. That was such a backstabber, which is not uncommon for them, but such a betrayer, such a backstabber. That they had a contract that wasn't written out the way that it should. They had um, um, told him A, B, C, and D and tricked him into doing something. This is how he feels now as he looks back. He's talking about the essence of the Joker himself. He was told to go outside of his body. I'm dead serious when I say this and get the character from the other side. He basically conjured up an entity to play that inside of him or the feeling of connecting with somebody on the other side who was gonna help him be the Joker in the movie. That's why it was such an intense portrayal, but he had to keep connecting with this energy to bring it in. Something about him wouldn't let the energy live inside him or he was split in how he saw it. So there was the energy of the, the entity over here that helped him play the Joker and then there was Heath Ledger over here, the person. So he was going between these two and it's, it's like fascinating to me. I've never heard this. 
I've heard it, but not like this, okay? So not in this circumstance. He was actually going into, you know how people meditate every day? So I meditate, I run, I get into an altered state when I'm running, which means I'm not aware of my physical surroundings. I'm kind of outside of my body, but you wouldn't know it. You would see me in the physical. He literally had people that were um, crossing him out of his body under their watch while he stayed here and then bringing him back to life over here. So he was shutting down his body with what he was doing. He's showing me this. What he's showing me is on the day that he died and supposedly he was getting a massage and then he OD'd, okay, or whatever, which um, accidentally, accidentally, hello, don't take drugs and then you won't accidentally have an outcome you don't want. That's just my thinking. Sorry, hardcore bitch here with that. But you know, at a certain point, when you accidentally do something that you've done many times over and it doesn't have the desired outcome, well, maybe you're not doing things that you, you're doing things you shouldn't be doing. Anyhow, getting back to it, the massage that he was supposedly getting was actually his, I'll use the word trainer, like at a gym, who was giving him a chemical substance that was covering his mouth and taking his, his, his spirit body out of the physical into a different dimension to collect information and bring back, um, I wanna say a particle or some kind of entity that comes back into the body with him and works in unison with him. And it's almost like he's brought to life. He wants to be brought to life. He's doing this to me right now. I feel like I wanna jump all over the place. He was brought to life by this entity. It brought him to life and he was able to express the Joker. He was able to come through. He was able to channel that and then it would go away. So he had to continue this behavior, much like when you look in the gyms these days, I'm just thinking of all these weightlifters and their muscles and they're taking the roids, right? They gotta shoot up, they gotta do it every day, they gotta lift the weights every day, but if they go like a month, let's say they get sick and they get strep throat or they have to get their tonsils out or they break a leg and they can't exercise, they shrink all down and that, that, that persona is gone. He's saying the same thing, but with being out of body. I mean, seriously, um, this is rather exciting actually, which tells me they know what they're doing when they do this thing. He was literally engulfing another entity into him and expressing himself like this. So that's really fascinating. So he's showing me that, okay, about his personality. And he's walking across, what he's showing me on the other side is interesting. He would get out of his body. So he would lay down on a table, much like we meditate, okay? so. You and I, we meditate, we sit in our bed, we lie down, we meditate, you know, we sit cross-legged, we do yoga poses, whatever it is, we run. We're out of body, we're going into an altered focused state. He's lying down, they're putting the mask on him and they're watching him. Somebody is taking notes and somebody is medicating him by medicating whatever is in that mask, okay? So call it whatever you will. He is lying down on this, it basically is a massage table, so for all intents and purposes, you would say he's having a massage for sure, and they are recording what happens, watching him step into himself. So there's him, and he's like knocked out, and then there's him, the Joker, that comes back out, and it's like right there, and he wakes up. This is being filmed, this is being watched, this is into an altered state, with somebody who I want to call is like a magician. I don't know how else to word it. They have a way of uniting prayer over him, medicating him and pushing him out of his body. He started doing this when he was really young. This is what I'm seeing. By young, I mean around the age of 21, maybe 20, he learned about this. They came to him with this. He tells me they came to me with this. They told me it would help my performance that I wanted to be a star is what he says. He really did. He wanted to be a good actor and a star. There's several people he worked with and some of them were crazy is what he's telling me. <laughs> I think he's talking about Mel Gibson. He's not showing me who it is. I'm going with Mel Gibson with this one from another movie that he did. It was around the time, it could be Billy Bob Thornton too, because he's kind of a little bit crazy, although he does like to marry the astrologer, so we'll give him that and the crazy one, the crazy you know one with a bunch of babies, um, Angelina. Anyway, he's talking about the time when he did the movie with um, Halle Berry and Billy Bob Thornton, and he's saying, 
that is around the time that his life changed and he began to not be able to trust a lot of the people in his environment and a lot of the people around him. He began to worry about what they were saying and what they were doing and how they were expressing their needs and their control over him as an actor and he didn't really want it. Um, he's showing me what went on and there were things going on around him that he observed and witnessed that were not cool and he's basically telling me that him and his daughter's mother were not actually getting along at the time of his death and that it was quite shocking to see her after he passed and to see what she said and whom she spoke with and kind of the agenda that was going on behind the scenes. I don't think they would have been together for that much longer. I don't know if they were or not, but they could have been trying to get back together and then not get together. Um, back and forth. There was something along those lines. They just didn't get along, but he wasn't in his body. He really was not in his body. He was constantly focusing outside of himself. He became obsessed with leaving the physical. Now, this is not an uncommon thing when you're able to get out of your body because you begin to recognize that there's so much in the universe to learn and there's so many things you can harness and you can use in a physical way on this side and knowledge and downloads and all kinds of things. However, there are some that prefer to live out of their bodies and you will see them. They're very drugged, very medicated, and they're not in their bodies or they're very, very crazy and they're not what we call crazy and they're not in their physical body. Someone stepped in while they stepped out. So it's like leaving your front door open and having another family sit on your, like an Airbnb, having another family sit on your chair, sit in your bed, do all of that while you are in somebody else's home. It's kind of that way. He's showing me this and he's showing me that the people that were in the room, he puts the mask on, he's not undressed and naked, like it's not a massage, like he's in a towel and the masseuse was called. The masseuse is not that. She is the one that is pushing him over to the other side. So when they say masseuse, what they mean is magician who can harness energy in order to help the subject leave their body in order to cross out of their body and they can monitor the subject's heart rate, the pulse, the vital signs, all of that and bring the subject back. It didn't work. It didn't work and he got pulled out. But what he's showing me is he got pulled out on the other side. For some reason, he was tricked into doing his extension this time. He's calling it an extension, an extension of self. He was tricked into it at this time and when he lost his breath, he literally was pulled, he's showing me a bridge on the other side, so he's pulled across the bridge, as in, okay, so when you step out of your body, and I used to do this as a kid, but not on drugs, okay? I mean, I could have been on drugs, but I wasn't on drugs. When you step out as a medium, and you are a trance medium, and you step out, you actually can see yourself like yourself, so the physicality of yourself, even though you could probably put your hands through it like a hologram, you can see that you can look down and see your hands and I could see my nail polish and I could see my shirt and I could see my glasses, but I couldn't touch myself and I could turn around and I could see my physical self. I had this happen when I gave birth to my oldest son. I flew back out of my body and watched myself give birth from behind myself. Um, and no, I wasn't medicated. It was a home birth. So there was no medication. I was begging for medication. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I was, but it wasn't one. It's the same kind of thing. What he's showing me is, as he looked down at his body and was out of it, this was normal. This is what he did. So he started to cross a bridge, okay? Like it's a bridge. It looks like a walkway of some kind to me, but it's narrow and he started to walk across it and there's handrails and there's just like a normal bridge and maybe an East Coast city kind of thing. He's walking across the bridge and he's looking for whoever he meets on the other side. He, there's a handler over there. There was a man with dark hair, on the other side, kind of dressed nice, a um, little bit old school looking or um, a certain style of dress. This is a person who's on the other side, literally deceased. And I see him in the distance, he's walking towards him and as he turns around, the bridge is gone. He's got no way back. That's what he's telling me, I couldn't get back. So whatever this bridge is, was a walkway between here and there, okay? But energetically, dimensionally and kind of off, off like this. He couldn't get back into his physical body. He couldn't do it. He couldn't get back. So as he's walking to the man over here, he's becoming terrified. He's beginning to be like, 
like this for real on the other side his physical body is starting to convulse on this side that's what he's showing me he's showing me the physical body convulsing they don't know what to do there's the quote masseuse on this side standing okay so if the bed is like this and i'm looking at you and my head is where his head is and i'm lying flat out the masseuse is to my right the door is right there but the masseuse and it might be a bedroom door off the main door okay so she's right there there is somebody sitting in that corner on a couch taking notes watching and doing everything with a stopwatch so i think there was a certain amount of time that he could leave his body but it's gone the walkway's gone and he's gone he's just gone he's gone the guy in the dark hair takes him and he's gone he is freaking the fuck out okay like he's telling me i am freaked out i can't get into my body i can't get the fuck in my body okay so he's beginning to say i can't get back he was playing with fire he's showing me his fingers they're all on fire i'm playing with fire he's like combustible at this point the level of rage that he's feeling he was not happy about crossing out of his body he did not die the way that they said he died and it had nothing to do with that actually it had to do with this experiment of being able to harness energy and personalities from some other dimension in order to express themselves but what he is telling me is the entity i'm calling it an entity the energy that he brought back from the other side to put into himself to be the joker was designed to quicken the energy from those that watch the movie so what he's showing me is that was a more powerful presence within his physicality in order to mirror what he needed to have you guys pay attention to so you would focus on him and he could command the space he's kind of showing me like that like i can command it you will hear what i'm saying i feel like this movie had a lot of subliminal messages i feel like that's what he's actually trying to say but he's showing me this this was not something that he expected to happen again people when you're doing stupid shit, even experimenting with leaving your body on this side you can leave your body and not come back you're on the other side now he's showing me once he got over to the other side the man with the dark hair kind of is walking off he can never catch him he is freaking out okay now i'm looking in the apartment where he was i'm looking at the quote quote masseuse and i'm looking at the woman on the couch she's like a clinician in my opinion um kind of um uh blondie brownie strawberry longer hair kind of a bland look there's not a lot of makeup there's no fingernails there's a notebook there's a camera on him he's the subject he's being watched the subject is being watched the subject is being watched nurse check his pulse is what i'm hearing a third person walks out there was a whole bunch of people in this apartment and is checking his pulse he's gone now there was something to do with the time that he died the way that he died and how he died and that's why there was a whole whole um what's that little i call her a little troll forgive me for calling her a troll i don't know why i think she's a troll but that mary kate olsen or ashley olsen or whichever one of those two little troll twins i just that's what i want to say they remind me of little trolls with fangs i don't know why i'm saying that please forgive me i've never met them and i don't know them but that's what i see i see their spirit animals as trolls with fangs that's why whichever one of the twins i think it was mary kate was called over because this was all part of what they were doing to gather power so let's back it up a bit and explain if you were in a haitian religion okay that one always freaked me out learning about it as a kid because they literally get into a zombie like state when they take a white powder i don't know what the white powder is and it's not cocaine i know where you guys are going you're like yeah it's cocaine it's not cocaine um it, they go into something they crush out it's got to be like an lsd or mind altering substance and they inhale it and it allows them to go into a trance and the purpose of that at least in the voodoo when you see them dancing if you've actually seen them dance it's african it's ritual it's it's haitian it's ritual when you see it they're inviting this is why they smoke cigarettes they're inviting the entities demonic or otherwise to come in and like mate with them that's what that 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 tribal dances that they do this is what was going on here but not in that traditional sense of um the type of religion that the haitian people follow or the voodoo people follow or the metaphysical spiritual aspect of it this was done differently this was like a little bit of time travel body movement 
switch in and out of houses, you can do that. You can get into an altered state where you can actually be your lover's sex and they can be yours and you can swap bodies. That is something that can be done for people who are in the higher metaphysical arts and can actually get in to that much of a state. He was doing something like that, but crossing literally out of his body. That little Mary Kate, I think it's that little one. Anyway, she's the one that came over there to remove all of the technical terminology and techno gear out of there. Not the drugs, not the fact that he had sex. Shouldn't give a shit if he had sex. It would have been good if they found him there naked with his, you know, towel off and whatever, doing, watching porn, having six girls. That would have been okay. They wanted you to think that. That is not what was there. He's showing me that. He was double crossed, double blind study, double trick, double cross. There's a producer who knew about this. They did it in order to focus our energy on that movie, which is why he was doing it so that he could emote the most intense energy, which we would hook to. Our energy is going to hook to it because it's going to be that intense. We're going to go like this and they're going to be able to manipulate. That's what I'm getting. He did not know he was going to cross out of his body. They knew he was going to cross out of his body. They knew that this time they were going to pull him back. There was something they would give him to counterbalance, like probably a shot to the heart or probably something they put under his tongue to bring him back out, but they didn't do it. So this tells me it was somewhat intentional. I will tell you this as I'm kind of moving through the energy, his focus is on his daughter right now with this new movie, The Joker, come out, coming out with Joaquin Phoenix. The energy is going to go back on him, but he wants to focus on his daughter who he loves to watch. He loves to read her stories at night. That's what I'm seeing. He goes in, he sneaks in, he reads her stories, but he is very focused on that sweet child. So that's what he's calling her, a sweet child. He's really pissed that he didn't get to deal with his family. This is what he did everything for. It's a trick is what he's saying. It's a trick. It's a power. It's a, it's a harnessing of energy unseen. You got to pay attention. This is something that's really going on. This is what he's showing me. Okay. Whew. He came in my body. Um, I mean, he was making me jump around. He's a jumper. He's, um, <laughs> he's an animated one. He had a lot to say. I didn't even think I was going to like talk to him. He wasn't on my list. But because, you know, the Aries, they're going to push through everybody else. They love to do that. They're going to be first in line. You know, they're always first in line, double Aries. Keep in mind, this is my first video with Heath Ledger, and I will be doing others. But I feel like I need to take a little rest right now. <laughs> okay, once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.